Hello and welcome back to a new After Effects episode. In this video I will show you a breakdown of the animation you just saw. The project files and everything I use in this video can be downloaded from my Patreon. You can find the link in the description below. Let's get started. So let's start with the first composition, the shape one. And I have here only one layer. This is a rounded rectangle. And I have my size 147 by 245 and the roundness 48. Then I have applied an inner glow layer styles. And for this I have the blend mode to color dodge, the opacity to 30, the color to this green color, then the size 33.5 and the range 60%. Then I've added a gradient ramp effect with black and white. The first point it's here and the other one it's here at the bottom. And then if I go to window essential graphics you can see that I've added here three properties. First, it's the start color and the end color of the gradient ramp. And the third one, it's the roundness of the shape layer. And this is because later on I want to reuse this shape composition and I will need these properties. You will see later how. And I can close this now and let's go to the next composition. Alright, so for this composition, let's start with the first layer. So I have a text layer here. It's just the A letter. Then I converted these two shapes by right clicking on the text layer, then create, then create shapes from text. And by doing that, you will get the A outlines layer and you will have the path of the letter. Then I have a new layer and I will get back to this later. And then I've added my shape composition that I've just created earlier. And for this one, let's start with the essential properties. So you remember that I have added those three properties, the start color of the gradient, the end color and the roundness. So I want to set a random value for each property because I will just duplicate this composition later. So I want to have a random color. So you can do that by setting an expression with math.random and one, one, one and one. Then for the end color the same and then for the roundness the same random expression but I have used here 20 and 70 because I want to get a random roundness value between 20 and 70. So for example for this one I got 69.9. Alright let's go further and then I've also scaled down my layer to about 47%. Then for the rotation I have set an wiggle expression and for the speed 0.4 and for the amplitude a random value between minus 180 and 180. Then let's go to the position. This is the most important property and now I want to position this layer on the path. So in order to do that we can use the point on path function. So basically first I just set my layer to the A outlines layer, then the path to the layer.content.pet. Then for the spacing, I have linked this to a slider control from the null tree layer. And if I check here the null tree, I have added here a slider control effect. I have renamed it to spacing. And then I've linked it here in my variable spacing. Then for the t variable, this is index divided by spacing. So I have here index minus two, because if I check the first shape layer then you can see the index for this is 2 and we want to start from 0 because the points on path start from 0 so then to minus 2 it's 0 and then I have used the path.pointonPath function and now this uh, this shape is positioned on the path and then if I duplicate this with command D or control D if you're on Windows, you can just see how each shape gets positioned on the A path on the next point. So first on it's point zero, then point one, point two, and so on. And I will remove this because I've already duplicated my shapes. So I can just make them visible. But before duplicating, I've also added a wiggle position effect with speed 0.5 and the amount to 20 pixels and also a noise effect with 12% noise. So now I have all these shapes with random colors and random roundness. 
and you can see that they are also rotating and moving just a little bit due to the wiggle effects we have on rotation and position. And then if I go here from the start, you can see that the shapes appear gradually one by one. So that's because I have set opacity keyframes. So if I press T here, you can see I have keyframes for the opacity, but I have offseted each opacity group because I wanted the layers to gradually appear one by one. And then on top of all the layers, I've also added an adjustment layer and then I've added a color balance effect because I felt that the colors had too much green. So by adding this, I could play with the RGB values to change them and also make them pop a little bit more. All right, so for the next thing, which is the spacing slider control, if I modify this, you can see, let me just delete this one first. So if you can see that if I increase the slider, the shapes get more closer one to another. And if I decrease it, the shapes get more distanced. So at first I've started with a value of 193. So the shapes were really, really close one to another. And then I've decreased the spacing to have them to about 43, which is like this. All right, and the last thing I have here is the path of the A outlines layer and I've modified this one a little bit. So first I have changed the path to go from A to B and then to C and then to D and so on. And that's the cool thing about this method because if I just take, let's say this point and I move it, you can see that the shapes get updated in real time and they stay positioned on the path. Alright, so that's all with this composition. Let's go to the next one. Alright, so for this composition, I have my digits filled with the shape that I've created in the first part. So you can do that by selecting your test layer and then the shape layer. And also I scale it down to about 72%. And then you select both of these and then I will use my plugin Rock Repeater. You can also get this from my Patreon if you want. I will put the link in the description below. So I set my distance between shape to about minus 10. And then I click on create instances. And now I have the text layer filled with my shape layer. And here for this variation of animation, I don't need the masks. So I can just delete them like this. And then you have your outlines layer again create this by right clicking create create shapes from text and then you copy this one and then you paste it here you move it at the bottom and then you take all your layers and for the track mat you select the outlines layer and it will look something like this but i've already did that so i'll go back to my instances composition and here again for the shape composition I've applied the same effects that I've applied to the previous composition. Uh, random colors and random roundness and also wiggle rotation and wiggle position and also a noise effect. And then I've also applied some color adjustments like before. And here these adjustments layer are just empty adjustments layer because I want these to have different colors. You can see that if I start duplicating this you will get different variations in color, roundness and position. And the last thing I did, I've animated the path for this outlines layer to go from 9 to 8 to 7 to 6 to 5 and so on. So that's only this composition. Let's go to the final one. All right. So for this final composition, I have here an adjustment layer called background and I've added a gradient ramp effect with this white color and this pink color. Then I have another adjustment layer called grid and for this I've added a grid effect and before that a ground bounce because I've rotated the adjustment layer and if you want to extend the grid you have to add the ground bounce effect. Then I've added a turbulent displace effect just because I wanted the grid to be a little bit distorted and then a four color gradient to have some colors on my grid. Then another adjustment layer called the ball 
And here I've added the CC ball action effect. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see we have small rectangles and it looks pretty nice. Then I've added my digit composition. I've scaled it to about 135, rotate it and move it on top. And also added some CC radar blur effect. Then I've duplicated this one and move it in the top left, sorry, in the bottom left. Then I have another adjustment layer called blur. And here I've added a CC radar blur, then another adjustment layer called noise. And here I've added again some noise, you can see without and with. And then I have added my letters composition. And for this I've added again a radar blur effect and a drop shadow effect. Then I have another adjustment layer called vignette, just to, to darken a little bit the sides. Then another adjustment layer called undigitize. And for this I've added some Gaussian blur and some sharpen. If I zoom in a little bit, maybe you can see better. It just makes the contour not so sharp. So that's why I call it undigitize. And then a curves effect just to make the colors pop a little bit more. So that's pretty much all. So that's the final result. Don't forget that you can download the project files and the Rob Repeater plugin from my Patreon. Link in the description below. Hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one.